Wednesday's devotion time. Great to have you. I shared on Sunday a little bit about some of the things that I do on a daily basis that actually is habitual in my life. And then we spoke about what does God do on a daily basis. But I want to fine tune what we can do on a daily basis and bring it right down to the following scripture on a daily basis. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18 NIV, and you're going to see that right coming up now. Paul writes to the church and he says, rejoice always. He goes on to say, pray continually. And then in verse 18, he says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now, this is not optional. Paul is not saying you have an option. If you want to, you can pray. And if you don't want to, you don't have to pray. If you want to be miserable, just be miserable. You don't have to rejoice. No, no. He's using a very strong Greek format where it's actually a command. I'm commanding you to rejoice always. I'm actually saying to you, be full of cheer. Be cheerful. Be happy. And pray continually. Don't stop praying. Paul actually in another passage of scripture says, pray without ceasing. That doesn't mean that you have to be in a prayer mode all the time, but it means that you have to be continuously aware of your father. As I said on Sunday, in you, renewing you day by day, being renewed. So be aware of that so that you can at the drop of a hat, at the snap of a finger, can talk to God openly whenever you find yourself. And then give thanks, not for the circumstance, but in circumstances. That's a tough one because I know that I face some difficult circumstances in my life and I'm pretty sure that there are going to be many, many more difficult circumstances. But what Paul is saying is give thanks to God that he's with you and that he's never left you and he's never forsaken you and you're praying and you're seeking his face on a continuous basis, that is his will for you. And the more you exercise this, the more there becomes a spiritual habit, the more you'll realize God is there for you, blessing you. I want to point out a similar scripture where Paul writes now to the Romans church in Romans 12, 12, and he uses similar language also in a command format. And he says the following, have a look, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, steadfastly, not not, I'm, I'm gonna, oops, I have to pray now quickly. Oh, uh, gentle Jesus, meek and mild, or Father, bless us, uh, whatever the case may be. No, no, be steadfast in your prayer life. No matter what the problem is, pray continually, he says to the Thess church in Thessalonica, and now he's saying to the church in uh, Rome, he says, continue steadfastly. I find uh, for me personally, a prayer life, my prayer life, I, I pray all the time and wherever I can, but there are specific times where I sit down and it's quiet, there's no disturbance whatsoever, and I can come before the throne of grace and talk to God about specific problems. Rejoice always, he says to the church in Thessalonica, but now he says rejoicing in hope. Who's your hope? I know who my hope is, and, and, and hope is not wishful thinking. Hope is fixed faith in God. He, he will come through for us. Giving thanks to, in all circumstances, Paul says to the church in Thessalonica, but he says here, patient in tribulation to the Roman church. <laughs> ah, God, give me more patience, and while you're doing it, please hurry up. <laughs> We all lack patience. We all sometimes are impatient. And for good reason, because sometimes your own personal trial, your own personal tribulation, your own personal issues seem to want to overwhelm you to no end. God says, be patient. 
He will come through for you. Jesus himself said in John 16, he says, In this world you're going to have tribulation, trials, problems, testing, but be of good cheer. There we go. Rejoice always in hope. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. So we realize that. We have exercises that you can start to practice showing love to God, but in that sense, showing love to a neighbor, looking after a neighbor, saying to yourself, how may I bless somebody else? I want to leave you with a tough one, a real tough one, and I want to introduce it by just giving you the first portion of Matthew 28, 19, where Jesus says, therefore go and make disciples of all nations. That's not the job of an apostle or an evangelist, a reverend, a duomini, a priest, a bishop. It's our responsibility. So I want to challenge you on a daily basis. Ask yourself the question, who may I influence today by my life, by my, what I'm doing, what I'm saying? I don't need to stand up on a soapbox and shout, turn or burn. But who can I influence to become a disciple of Jesus? Tough one. But let's get back to it. Are you rejoicing? Are you praying? And are you giving thanks on a daily basis that becomes your routine habit? I trust that this is so for you as it is for me and for many, many others. Can we pray? Father, give us all the grace to get so involved in you and in our spiritual walk with you that it becomes a daily habit with our lives, glorifying you every single living, breathing moment of our lives. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Look forward to seeing you again on Sunday. Until then, God bless.